Welcome to the Joker R1 step-by-step -step video. This will show you how to replicate this particular Heath Ledger Joker artwork. Um, in this particular case, I've airbrushed this design on either fairing of a R1 uh, custom street bike. So at the moment, I'm just mapping out the actual card uh, where Batman is seen. So basically doing that with a white, this is a house of color white, probably about 50-50 mix with reducer. And I'm just getting a decent enough coverage on the card. I'm not worrying too much about overspray because I'm gonna mask it up as a positive later on in the video and um, before I do the, the portrait. So that'll give you sort of a sense of depth. It'll look like the card is in the foreground and the portrait is not as sharp and behind it. So you can see here, I'm just working on the other card. So just getting a nice white coverage, trying to go as neat as possible, but again, not worrying too much about overspray. If I had to worry about overspray, I wouldn't be this, uh, you know, taking it this easy. I'd be a lot closer with the airbrush and trying to keep my edges nice and neat. Um, you can see here, I've just switched to black. So this is a thinned out black. It's actually got a bit of blue mixed in with it. Um, because if the, the artwork reference had a, had a sort of a shade of blue in it. So I put that in with the black, only a few drops. And I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm just putting in the lettering freehand. So it's still showing through from the chalking. Um, so I'm just marking that in so that it doesn't totally disappear on me. And um, it looks fairly harsh, but don't worry too much about that because we're going to come back later and I'm going to blow in some white over that just to knock it back and make it look like it's more of a part of the card um, so that it looks a bit older and a bit more dated. Sorry about the light here reflecting. It's a bit hard to see what's going on, but I'm actually just dusting a thinned out white. So I've gone back to my original white, but added a bit more reducer just so it's a lot more transparent and just freehand again, dusting over it, not worrying too much about overspray because like I said earlier, I'm going to come back and mask up this whole area so everything will be nice and clean by the end of the project. So just sort of dust it in there, get nice sort of coverage. I'm shifting between parts just to let bits dry as I'm doing them. Okay, so I'm just uh, moving on to the next part of the project. Uh, you can see here I'm up a bit closer with the airbrush. Just... Um, getting some, some detail in with white. It's a bit hard to see here, sorry about the filming. For some reason the uh, light that I was using has been reflecting. So you can see here I'm just, as I do with most of my artwork, if you've seen many of my other videos, I tend to use white first, especially on black, just so that I can um, draw the artwork using just the highlight, if that makes sense. So. I'm painting just the highlighted areas and then that gives me the body of the artwork, leaving the the black obviously darker so that um, that becomes the shading. So ultimately I'm just using the one tone at the moment, but once I've done this step, it starts to look three dimensional already. I, you know, I go back in and I refine it more and more and more, but this is just my first step and uh, this is the way I like working. So not everyone does it the same. There's really no rules. You can do what, what you feel comfortable with. But um, yeah, in this particular case, and as, as I said with a lot of my other projects, I do start with white and I try to shape it, the artwork as much as possible. Even just a small detail like the Batman on the card, it's obviously an important part of the um, artwork. So I'm trying to render it as accurate as possible and um, you know get all the little details in there as best as possible. Uh, the more you do now, the, um, the more reference you've got when you start putting your sharper tones in. So um, take your time with this and just, yeah, really just nice and neat. As you can see, I'm really up close to get that detail and then I blend out. So whenever I'm blending out from a sharp edge, I come back a bit further away from the, from the um, surface and just lightly dust it in and feather it out. So, you know, just be careful not to go too wet, obviously, because you don't want to have any blowouts or anything. So I've done all that step now. So you can see I'm working now on the glove. So just going to start rendering all those areas and bringing that glove basically to life. Um, so, you know, just putting all the wrinkles in, all the stitching marks, 
just so I know where I'm going to go once I start shifting to the black blue mix, which I'll do next. So, you know, just as you can see here, I'm putting in a couple of the high spots, um, all the definitions in the glove. So you can see here, just building up my white, taking my time. I'm a bit more careful now with the um, with keeping it a bit tighter, but obviously I'm trying to put in some detail. So again, any bit of overspray is not really going to matter. We're going to clean that up later. So you can see here, I'm getting some texture in the glove. Try not to just paint it flat. You know, uneven strokes can help if you if you want that sort of texture. In this case, we want it to look like a leather glove. So um, you want fairly bright highlights and then once you come in with the black because that brightness is there it's going to give that sort of real reflective nature of um of leather so look real nice dark leather looking so here you go i'm just rendering this other hand now this other glove so pretty much doing the same sort of thing get all the detail in the stitching that's that's not just putting in one line i'm actually you know, working lightly and then going in a bit bit sharper to get the brighter bits of the stitching and everything in there. So I'm using, you know, slight little dots when I'm doing the stitching so that you don't just have one straight line. So really, you can see how many times I'm looking up at the reference. So constantly look at your reference, especially when you're doing something like this that is a fairly well-known artwork. Everyone knows what it looks like. So you want to be really accurate so that you can keep your customer happy you know or if you're doing it for yourself you you know you still want it to look good so just take your time follow your reference i'm um, just clouded in a bit from the hand there and now i have shifted to my blue black mix so it's going to appear more black but there is actually a hint of blue in there so it gives a nice look when you blend it out, like when you overspray dust over the white, it doesn't tend to go brownie, which is a look that I don't particularly like and I definitely didn't want on this piece. Um, if you look at the reference, it does have that bluish tinge to it, so it's a good way to get that, that effect. So here again, I'm, I'm just working all the dark areas. I always work the darkest spots first. Um, because then you can sort of work out from there how dark you need to go in other areas. So you can use that as your guide. So obviously in, in a real dark shadowed area, you know that's almost solid black. And then you look at your reference and think, okay, that's probably a mid-tone in that other section. So you go back to your original, the darkest point, and then you go half of that and dust in the other areas, if that makes sense. So up nice and close wherever it's really sharp and dark and the stitching again so I'm working it all in layering on top of that white so because I've been fairly accurate with my white I know exactly where the shadows are going to be but I'm still using that reference all the time so you know don't forget to look at it it is important just paint what you see don't try and make things up um, just you know take your time and paint what you see and you'll get that result pretty much as accurate as the reference so so here you go, I'm just doing a few more details, keeping it nice and sharp. Obviously this bit here we're, we're not going to mask because it's just going to be the whole positive stencil of the card and the glove. So you want to be nice and sharp where that finger, um, the finger of the glove actually grabs hold of that glove, uh, that, the um, card, sorry. So here we go, we're just rendering it a bit more. I'm still working in the detail here, just using my black blue mix. And you can see here I'm doing some sort of patchiness as well in there. So I'm getting, I'm building up a bit of texture on those leather gloves. So we don't want them totally flat. Remember, you want to have all those different shadows and textures in there, leaving the highlighted areas. Um, so we will go back over those with white later to really brighten them up and get them nice and sharp but at this stage just render as much as possible so get as as much detail in as possible and um, you know you can see how they're starting to really look three-dimensional and that's the effect that you really want to go for so 
So for this particular task, I'm using an Iwata CMC with the multi adjustment valve on the front. So that way I can turn down my air pressure on the actual airbrush and run the paint thinner. And it just, um, yeah, it just pretty much helps to get that finer detail. Okay, so I'm still working away all my details. So this is on the second glove now. So even the grooves, you know, I'll do a fairly sharp line, but then I'll blend out from there. So you sort of, you, you got to have that control, but you know, if you practice, you can get this sort of effect quite easily and, and gloves are a great thing to render. This is a really, this is actually a really good project. It's, um, you know, there's so many different things to it. So you can learn a lot from this one, especially with, you know, doing the leather effect. Then you've got the card. We're going to distress the card. We've got the Batman artwork in the center. And then you're going to be masking all that up and doing the Joker portrait, which is a good portrait to do because it has makeup. So makeup's always great to do because it's a little bit less forgiving as doing a proper skin tone portrait, but always effective when you've finished it. And I'm, I always love the end result. So, so here we go. We're still putting in more and more detail, just the stitching. Obviously, the more detail you add, the better the overall look. Um, these are sort of the finer things that a lot of people don't do. Um, you know, don't cut corners, take your time. These sort of projects do, do take quite a while to do, so, you know, don't rush it. Okay, so I'm just doing the layers now. Those You can see the finger that I'm working on now with the, the drop shadow onto the next one. Um, I'm keeping that fairly sharp and then working in my stitching, blending out, so from the darkest edges and working my way back through and being careful not to go too dark over all the light areas that we've just done. That way I still keep a bit of an idea of where I've got to go with the highlights at a later stage. Okay, so I'm sort of working in between the two as well. You notice I'm jumping from one to another. If I think the other glove needs a few things that I've forgotten on this particular one I'm working on, well, I'll shift back over. So, you know, you're trying to make them look as close as they can to each other but obviously one good thing is you're never going to see both sides at the same time so as long as they're fairly accurate you know no one's ever going to be able to see both at the same time so just rendering more and more and now I'm going to start with that same blue black mix I'm going to start rendering the Batman artwork on the actual card so it is fairly small, so you just take your time to get all the details in. Um, if you're a bit unsure with doing it this sort of quickly, when I say quickly, I mean starting with white and then going straight to black, you might be more comfortable in, in doing a few more stages and steps. If you wish to do that, start with white, then make up of like a grey and work your grey in as if that's the only tone you're using and then add a bit more black to your grey do it again until you sort of gradually get darker and darker. It is hard to go from straight white to a blue black mix, like, cause it's still fairly much like solid black almost. And, um, you know, you really don't have as much room for error. So, you know, if you are just sort of starting out with airbrushing, it's always a handy tip. And it's one I tell a lot of my students, just, um, go light and build it up. So, you know, feel free to do it that way. And, um, you know, it's just crucial to take your time and work it all in. Obviously, you know, worst case scenario, if you do make a mistake, you can always white it out again and just start from start. But, you know, in this particular case, this is someone's motorbike. So, you know, I don't want to be doing that. But, you know, if you wanted to have a go and do it on a sample panel, that's always a good idea. Or if you're doing it on a canvas, you know, using, say, a water-based paint, go ahead and then, you know, if you do make a mistake or something goes wrong, you've got that, you know, you can always white it out and start again. Or, you know, in this case, black it out. So you can see here, I'm just working in the cape, putting in the shadows so that, you know, there's that depth and he has this sort of 
pattern underneath him. It's like almost like a fabric pattern coming off the card there. So just working that in, it's like a torn fabric. You can see I'm pretty much up close for the whole process. So I'm just sort of dusting in around on the card. You can hardly see it because of that lighting against playing up a little bit. Here you go, you can start seeing I'm, I'm actually dusting in on the edges of the card. The reason for that is it's going to give it that distressed look. We don't want the card to look brand new. So it's got to look a bit old and um, torn and used. So just sort of working all that in. Now I'm going back over those joker letters. So not as harsh this time. So I'm just sort of picking up a few of the edges. Very hard to see off the video and I do apologize for that. But um, you know, once we finish with part two, you'll see some completed shots and you'll be able to see clearly on the photos. Okay, so I'm just distressing the card a bit more, working it in. Again, a little bit of overspray is not going to hurt. At the moment now, I've, got, I've switched back to white and I'm just dusting back over those letters because I don't want them to be totally standing out too much. I don't want them to look like fresh print because it's a distressed looking card, an aged looking card. The idea is to, to make it look that way. So by doing the lettering fairly strong, you can go back over it with white and that'll knock it back. So here I'm just working on the second Batman. So just again, taking my time, I've sort of skipped through this part because it's pretty much the same as the other side. So I didn't think you need to see all of it again. Don't want to bore you too much while you watch this video. So just working it all in. And you can see Batman starting to come to life. So you still want to put a lot of detail in. Because you want people to look at this and really notice all of the little bits and pieces like all of the, you know, Batman sort of armor plating and everything on, on his chest there, all the muscle tones, you want all that in there. You don't want to skip on anything like that, especially with a recognizable character like Batman. Okay, so I'm doing the same now as what I did on the other card. I'm just laying in the, the Joker lettering. Okay, you can see it's fairly dark again, and then I, I basically work back over it with the white just to knock it all back. I'm going to run some shadows in as well, again to distress the card. Don't worry about your overspray, all that's going to get cleaned up. Okay, what I'm doing now is I've basically finished those two to the point where I'm happy with, and I'm sealing them with a House of Colour Intercoat Clear. So it's about a, a one to one mix with Reducer. I'm just sealing those off because the next step will be masking. I'm going to mask these off as a positive before I start working on the portraits. I've got a bit of transparency paper and I'm with a um, Sharpie, I'm just tracing around what I've done. So only the outside line, you don't have to go and draw in all of the artwork. And I've had to do this on both of them because each stencil needs to be unique to that side because they do vary slightly. So again, just work your marker right around. There's many ways you could do this, but you know, I'm just showing you a way that you can do it without stuffing around too much with projection and everything. And what I do now is if you had a light box, that would work as well, but I'm just tracing over that outline. Um, if it was the complex part of the design, like the whole design, I would have used a light box, but I'm just trying to show you a technique that you, anyone can do at home. So place the transparency down and then I've stuck application tape over it and I can actually see through the application tape and I redraw my line and then these particular um, strips of application tape will be used to mask up as a positive. So here we go, I've drawn that one out now and you can see I've removed the transparency film from underneath and I'm just freehand cutting that. So there you go, that's one stencil. And I've also marked which one's left and which one's right so I don't get confused. So now do the same with the X-Acto knife, nice sharp blade and my cutting mat. I cut it around 
the outside of the line, making a positive stencil. Now I line it up as best as I can. The application tape wants to roll a little, so just work with it, stick it down, and then using my squeegee, I, I get rid of all the bubbles, and I just fix up any loose ends with the masking tape. So I'm just going to repeat that process on the other side. So you can see here, I'm just fixing up any edges that I want straighter or with the card. Everything's got to look fairly, fairly straight, although it's a distressed old looking card, you still want to make it look effective. So I'm just sticking that on now, squeegeeing all the bubbles out again, and, and that'll be it. So that's it for the first part of this video. Uh, part two will be uh, covering the portrait side of things. So I've just masked this off now and we'll be ready to hit the portrait in part two. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you soon.